Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to episode 43 of the Alchemy Devlog. It's your pal Isaac here with the latest news from the dev team. In this episode, we're going to dive into the new help center and a bunch of universe updates. I'll also take some time to go over what's next, like City of Mist, Vampire the Masquerade, and of course, answer a few questions that have come in through our devlog Q&A form since last time. If you'd like to ask a question of your own, you can find a link to that down below in the description. Let's dive in. First up, the new help center. Um, so we have gotten rid of our built-in help center that you used to be able to find over here um, under the little question mark button that would pop up a knowledge base filled with universe articles that were kind of a little bit hard to navigate and not searchable, um, as well as the feedback form that was in that same help kind of modal. And we've rolled that all into a new little button down here that follows you throughout the app and gives you quick access to both our team, our support team, which is our team, uh, and the um, help center, the new help center. All those articles have been moved into this little widget here. Um, so you can search for articles in here. You just click in and search for whatever term you're looking for. And you can click in, find answers on how to create spells right away. For 5th edition D&D, &D. you can expand this to make it bigger, read through the whole article, and more. You can pop this out to a new tab for a full screen help center as well. And if you ever want to talk to the team, you've got this messages tab here where you can ask a question. Send that to us, and that'll go to the same support inbox that we use uh, for everything, and we can communicate back to you right here in the app. Um, you can also get things, get answers to your questions by email if you so desire, or if we're slow at responding. Uh, we also have some handy dandy links in here uh, to get you out to our alchemy guides on YouTube, uh, the devlog, which I'm pretty sure you know how to find that, uh, and our Discord, uh, which a lot of you are on there as well. So have a look at this. As I said earlier, it follows you throughout the app. So as I go to my library, it's still right here where I left it. When I go to my universes, it's in here. If I go to an, a specific article, we've got it here and we've moved anything that it would be in the way of, um, kind of out of the way. So this scroll to top here or top and bottom if you're um, editing an article. And anything else in the app that this might interrupt, we have mostly taken care of those. Um, I say mostly because it's possible we missed something. So if we did, let us know. I think the biggest one to note is in-game. So this is actually available in-game as well. Um, and it doesn't take up too much space down here. It's pretty tucked away. Um, as a GM, you've got your scenes down here. As a player, you'd have some other panels down here with um, different actions and whatnot, depending on the system. You can still get to it and learn about the things that you can do on Alchemy or ask us questions in your game. But it can sort of interrupt the immersive mood of your game. And so we wanted to make sure to give you a way to tell it to go away um, for games. So to do that, you just click on this gear here and then go to hide help and it will disappear. And it will not show in games anymore on that particular client, uh, your that browser or app on your computer until you go in and you uh, click show help again from that same menu. So as I leave the game, it's going to show back up and I can continue to chat with support or look up articles. And then when I go back into the game experience, that will disappear. So one way to get out of that for gameplay, um, where this may be the, the last thing on your mind, um, getting, getting support or finding out how to do things, you may just wanna be playing your game. Um, so there's that option for you. Let us know what you think. You can um, send us feedback through that now if you'd like to, or um, you know, leave a comment down below. All right, next up we have a whole slew of universe updates to go through. First on the list of new universe features is a change to the way um, universes work for free accounts. So I've jumped over to a free account here and I'm going to create my one universe that I get with my free account. So um, previous to this change, on a free account, you were limited to only 50 objects in a universe. So you'd have a little counter up here in this area of the screen, letting you know that you've created you know, two out of 50 objects or whatever the, the count may be. 
um, including things like character templates. Uh, we decided to remove that object limit from free accounts. Uh, so on a free account, you're still limited to a single universe, uh, but you can create unlimited objects within it, and you can even create unlimited modules within it um, to organize a whole bunch of stuff around one universe on your free account. Um, one thing we did remove from free accounts is the ability to collaborate on a module of your own. Um, so as a free account, I'm no longer able to invite people to collaborate on my free module. However, you as a free subscriber uh, or a, on, a, on a free tier, you can be invited to collaborate on someone else's universe. If they're on a, a paid um, Alchemy Unlimited subscription, they can invite you to collaborate on their universe and you no longer have any sort of limits over on that side inside of their module as long as their account is in good standing. So um, that's a nice bug fix and sort of um, user experience improvement for everybody um, and it gives that free tier a little bit more to work with. Next up on the universe front, I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to my devlog user and jump into a system builder universe. It doesn't really matter which universe I'm using for this one. Um, we changed the way that uh, certain types of GM actions work in universes and the way that those universes connect to games. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Um, so if I create an action, we'll call it secret role table, and we're going to pick role table, and we'll just leave all this stuff at the defaults. Over here on the options tab, when you're creating an action in universe, you have a switch, uh, well, a series of switches here, uh, but the top one is what we're talking about today. This used to be called hidden from players. Um, and what this does is restricts who can pick this action from the actions list inside of a game. Um, so if we turn this on, what that's going to do is make this action only show up inside the game for a GM adding an action to their actions panel. Um, so let me check the sysbuild39. So let's go ahead and create a new game. And we'll choose the sysbuild39. system and we'll go ahead and start this game and if i go to i don't really need to add a player for this a, an npc will do just fine as well we'll add an npc if i go to my tools as the gm of this game and i click add actions you'll see that secret role table that i had set up as a gm action is available to add to my actions right there and then i can roll that role table um, if I were to go play an NPC, or if I was a player in the game, and I want, wanted to add that action to my actions list, you'll notice that that action does not show up in this list anymore um, because it is flagged as GM action. Uh, so this actually, it was filtered out of this list as well, but if you had an actions uh, section on your character sheet, which this system builder sheet does not have that currently, but if it were on the sheet, you could have previously gotten to those GM only actions through that way. Um, so a little bit of a behavior change, a little bit of a functionality change there, but I think it's a lot more straightforward and clear that what you're doing is actually making a GM action that's restricted to the tools panel. All right, back over to our universe for one last universe update. Uh, I'll go into this universe to do a few things. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create an article in here. And so now our untitled module has an article and it has an action. And what I'm going to do is duplicate this module. This is a new function. If you have a module set up with a bunch of objects in it and you want to duplicate it, simply right click, click duplicate, and a few seconds later, uh, or not even that long, you've got a copy of that module with the same exact things in it. So if I were to create another module in this universe, and go over to it, it does not have any objects in it, but this copy has the NPC and the action uh, and the article that I had created from that. And of course, you can always add things to another module this way. But if you ever find yourself in a situation where having a complete copy of a module would be a good thing for you, like maybe you work for us and you do this all the time with Alchemy Enhanced modules, for example, uh, this is a great way to set that up. I think it's worth noting and pointing out that this doesn't create copies of the objects themselves. When I'm saying object, I'm talking about things like articles, NPCs, pre-mades, 
Um, those are all what we consider to be universe objects. Those objects themselves don't get duplicated here, uh, just their relationship with different modules is what gets duplicated and all of the metadata about that module itself. So bear that in mind as you go duplicating your modules, but this will save some folks a lot of time. All right, what else have we been working on? Let's take a look at the what's new section to see this content roadmap. So um, most of the other things we've been working on aren't visible yet. They were kind of behind the scenes stuff. We've been doing a lot of work on City of Mist in particular, this system here in alpha. This is actually moving into beta this week. We've invited uh, a handful of folks, maybe a dozen, to start beta testing City of Mist um, with their own groups uh, to get that game dialed in as well as we can before we release it, uh, hopefully soon, very soon. Um, so we're working hard on City of Mist, getting all of its kind of unique, powered by the apocalypse adjacent features, tags and rolling with tags and all of that stuff really dialed in for City of Mist before we release that one. Um, so this goes back to last episode when I was talking about us wanting to really test things and beta things with actual uh, players before we release them to the marketplace. We're going through that process now with City of Mist and it's already yielding great benefits for us. We're getting a lot of great feedback uh, and seeing a lot of ways that we can improve this system before we bring it live. So that is cruising along quite nicely. Um, this list is out of date as it chooses to be often. Uh, it is a sentient list that makes its own choices. Uh, Broken Tales, for example, you can see that that's live, but it's here in the beta list, so we should get that moved over soon. Dark Matter 2, boy, howdy, this is one old list. But that's not we're here, what we're here to talk about. Uh, the other thing that we've been working hard on is Vampire. Uh, so I keep talking about Vampire. I think it's this is maybe the third episode in a row where I'm saying, Vampire's coming, Vampire's coming. Well, uh, mark your calendars for October to be a real cool vampire month. I don't know, maybe on Alchemy, maybe everywhere. Um, but we are hard at work on wrapping up the beta phases of the Vampire the Masquerade system. Um, and it's it's coming along really nicely. We have a lot of cool new features built out for that game. And of course, with these all being System Builder titles, we've been rolling out new features for System Builder as well and keeping that beta humming along nicely. What else is up next? Um, so one big thing that's on the near-term horizon is a fix for Twilight 2000. We've got uh, an issue where you can't create a game from a quick start there. Uh, well, you can. It does work, but it throws an error message that's very confusing. So we have to dive into that issue here soon. Um, and of course, we're gonna be getting those stream mode alternate camera layouts out uh, in the next two weeks. That's uh, a goal to wrap that one up for September. Beyond that, we also have some improvements coming to universe sharing, um, probably not in the next two weeks, but kind of on the near-term horizon, as well as uh, some improvements to our subscription flow and information around what it means. So look for more improvements there as well. All right, let's dive into Q&A. Let's get into the Devlog 43 Q&A Universe article. Adding custom options to characters. Hello, after the last Devlog, I had a play around with creating characters in the library character section, but noticed that for some systems, options are missing. For example, for Symbrum, while the options from the core rulebook are available, the additional options from the players, the advanced players guide seem to be missing. While I can use the custom option to add them, for new players, it would be great to have all the options of a system available. Anyway, as always, love how the platform is coming along and appreciate all the work you do and the insight you give to the community. Martin. Hey, Martin, thank you for the feedback and the kind words there. Uh, yeah, so I kind of mentioned this a little bit last time. We definitely want to go back through and improve a lot of these systems, and that counts for Symbrum as well. I think that in this case, we maybe were just, we missed those, adding those um, additional features to those sheets as we were building them out. Um, but uh, we... I, I don't think there's anything stopping us from adding those in. So this is definitely one that I, I think we could we can get on our near-term uh, map to improve for Symbrum specifically, probably pretty soon. And I think as a general um, sort of philosophy, 
we always want to include as much as we can for the players. Uh, and this one's probably just one we missed. Um, but I will also say that we always want to preserve the ability for that custom option to be there for people who want a more pen and paper like experience. They can click through that custom option and type in whatever they want. This is sort of how our 5e implementation works today. Uh, there's not a lot of pre-selectable options that you can choose, but you can type anything you want. You can build a character by hand um, in, in 5e pretty well, and that kind of mirrors the pen and paper experience quite nicely. So anyway, to loop back around on that, we'll definitely get this one improved for Symbrum specifically, and in general, uh, we agree that we'll want to do that for the new players. All right, next up, multiple actions. I don't know if that's a very good header for this. Let's get into what this question is. Hi team, I was wondering if there's any potential for multiple actions used in an action to be condensed into a single post in the journal. I've built out single action oracles for Merkborg solo play supplement, Solitary Defilement. Highly recommend it. Thank you, I actually have not played that and now I want to. Which use multiple role tables per action to generate a variety of results such as dungeons, dungeon rooms, NPCs, and monsters. I struggle with text and parsing lots of visual information, so with the title and individual post for each option used in the action, it can make the information appear muddled. I feel that having the option to toggle results consolidation for actions into a single post would be a better change for the purposes of accessibility and clearer presentation for all users. I'm wondering if that could be a feasible change we could see in the future. Thanks for your time. Love the application and seeing the transparency of the team through the development. Can't wait for System Builder to be up and running for everyone. Tito Huki. Uh, wow, yeah, this is a great idea. Um, I like the idea of being given the option or the, the kind of configuration to condense the output from actions. So you could really build a big list of chained roll tables, as you're sort of mentioning here. And that output could be, you know, it could be a really big list in the journal. Um, so providing a way to kind of condense that down or uh, collapse it in certain ways, or maybe um, just give it generally a better, a better fit for that type of scenario could definitely play into some stuff that we have uh, coming in the near future. So I like this. I think we'll, we'll likely address it in a, like a post V1 update after we've left early access behind and we've gotten all these V1 titles out there. Uh, but definitely like this, so appreciate the feedback. AE Soundtracks. Would it be possible to implement changeable enhanced edition soundtracks? Maybe a section in the shop for these. I would love the option to change the dynamic music once in a while, and perhaps even scene by scene. Shard Collector. Yeah, so um, the ability for these um, Alchemy Enhanced audio tracks to be sort of Portable, um, being able to move those from scene to scene or pull them in from a universe assets list into your own scene is something that's been on our list for a while. Uh, and it's something that I definitely would like to deal with before we leave early access behind. Um, so hopefully we can get that addressed before we, we leave V1, uh, that, that V1 flag in the ground. Um, but it may, may have to wait until slightly after that. But it's definitely on our minds. It's on my mind personally a lot. And um, stay tuned for more updates on that. It's definitely something we want to be able to support. All right, lastly, Sir Charles with a tactical mode question. What I love about Alchemy is the clean interface and ease of use. But I wondered if tactical mode could benefit from the addition of some functions. Spoiler, yes. For example, it would be very useful to have icons indicating character status, either alterations such as poisoning or the simple fact that a character has used a reaction and thus cannot perform actions during its activation. Is this something we can expect in the future? Definitely. Um, personally, I can't wait to get back into tactical mode and work on some things. We have props on the near-term uh, list, things like statuses we've definitely talked about, and the often requested drawing tools are all things that we want to get into sooner than later and build out a better tactical experience or an improved tactical experience um, for those times when you need maps and tokens for uh, the crunchier tactical games. So yeah, appreciate the, the feedback on that, Sir Charles. All right, that's it for Q&A this week.
All right, that is all for this episode of the devlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, head on down below, smash that like button, hit subscribe. I think it changes colors these days. It's kind of cool. Uh, and get more of our videos in your notifications. Get more notifications. Add some stress to your life so that you have to uh, go and consume the alchemy content. Uh, that's it. Let's go play some games. Mm-hmm.